It's Allie with Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we're gonna dial in some espresso. Um, I thought it would be a good idea while everyone's hanging out at home, just kind of going over together how I would dial in and maybe give you some tips for dialing in yourself while you're making coffee at home. Um, so today, all I've done so far is I've just tossed in um, coffee into this grinder, haven't touched it, haven't pulled any coffee through it yet, um, but we are dialing in Cova's Honduras Porfirio Castellanos. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the notes of this are raspberry, pinot blanc, and molasses. Um, it's washed, um, and so this should be a pretty unique espresso. So anytime you're doing a single origin, um, especially this one, since it is got some raspberry and fruit notes to it, um, should be kind of like jammy. So I'm gonna kind of aim for that style. Um, but the way I do it first is I try to, once I just like toss in my coffee into the grinder, um, basically I'm trying to aim for a classic recipe first and then adjust to taste. So let's see what happens here. Uh, got my Akaya Pearl S scale that I'm using right now. Make sure that's all teared out. Forgot to wipe it out. So let's just make sure that made no difference. It did. Perfect. Okay, so this was just left at whatever we set last time. So that was 14 grams. Just gonna add a little more. Shooting for 18, 17.1, 18 18.6. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this out. 18.2 I'm okay with. Got 18 grams in my portafilter here. Do my regular tamp. This is the R58 uh, from Rocket, so it's a dual boiler, so no purge needed. Just gonna try to balance that out, start my timer, kick it on. Okay, so about five seconds is when it dropped, maybe a little bit sooner. Um, usually you wanna see around six to seven seconds when it drops or comes out of the portafilter here. That usually gives you a good indication that it's in a general range for what you want. And then I'm gonna cut it off at 34, let it drip to 36, so 36.1 in like 29 seconds. So this is kind of already in that good range. Let's just taste it though and see how it turned out and if we'd make any differences there. Yeah, so it's a little bitter. Yeah, I would, for the next shot, I think we'll need to back off the grind a little bit. Um, yeah, cause it's got a really bitter taste to it. Yeah, so I'm gonna back off the grind and we'll again. All right. All right, make sure to tear it out again. Not turn it off, just tear it out. All right. And you would wanna make an adjustment before you grind. So we're gonna go a little bit coarser. So this is the Atom 75. Um, so for this one, that's counterclockwise. Um, and if you're using a Eureka grinder or any stepless grinder, um, the change that you make is um, larger than you think. So this dial is actually directly influencing how far apart the burrs are. Um, so I'm just gonna make a small little change here because it was still within the range, but not quite the flavor I wanted. So I'm gonna back it up. I'm gonna move it just a little bit. If we're talking about the numbers on the dial, like a half notch. Clear some of that out. We wanna make sure we're getting all even grinds. And then, whoop. You want the time to start over too. All right, so this grinder is set to 3.25 seconds. 
and with this new grind size so you'll get an idea of how big of a change you made too by if you're not changing the time yet just changing changing the grind size um, so the first time I ground through it, it was 16 grams, right? Second time, now it's 19 grams with that adjustment. So that shows you just how much of an adjustment I made. So we're gonna knock it back down to 18. You can use a spoon to do this. Probably a good time to use spoons. Just me drinking the espresso though. Another tamp. Perfect, clear that off. I'm gonna rinse out my shot glass here for a second. R58 has kind of some wide reach here. Cool. All right. All lined up, tear it out. Shot number two. All right, so that time, about the same drop time. Looks to be going a little bit faster, which is what we want. It's looking good. All right, so I'm gonna stop it at 34, and then usually it will drip to 36. So it stopped a little bit sooner time-wise. I think it was 27 if I didn't quite look exactly. Rinse going on. All right, second shot. Oh, that's better. Yeah, so now it's less bitter. It's revealed like a floral note. Still, um, it's still got a little bit of a bitter note to it, so I might take it back a little more. It's not bad though. I feel like if you were doing milk, this might be a good one because it's gonna be a little bit stronger than what I'm gonna do for like drinking just espresso. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. I, I don't have much to complain about, but it's not perfect. So let's pull another one. I'll just go ahead and set that one down. And then um, there is like a concept going around that is facilitated by a coffee company that a shot can die. Um, so basically that would be like if it's sitting for more than a few seconds, the crema will dissipate, which is true. So if you're doing latte art or something like that, you would want all that crema. Um, but if you're just drinking espresso or, you know, making Americano, not as important. Although if you like the crema, obviously using it sooner will help. So there's my piece on that. So I'm going to back this off just a little bit. Anytime you're making grind adjustments finer, you'd want to have the grinder running while you're doing it. While it's coarser, still good practice to be running, but not as important. So I'm going to make another tiny little adjustment here. <clears throat> Clearing it out. Perfect. So let's see what this one's weighing in at. So 20. Okay, so more so we see that adjustment that I made. All right, 18.2. So you do see I kind of got some divots. If you had a distribution tool, this would be a good time to use it. Um, there's some like different distribution techniques that we could talk about, but that is for another time. Right, let me go ahead and rinse this. Beautiful. Oh, I should mention the boiler is set, the brew boiler temperature is set to 226. I forget what that comes out to at the actual brew head, but you could check the rocket manual. We'll talk about temperature if this one comes out not the way I like it either. So we're gonna go ahead and start it. Yeah, okay, so that one dropped a lot sooner. And if you can see up close, it's spinning out a little bit quicker. This might be too quick though. 
yeah. So this one finished up right around 20 seconds, which is a little bit short. So let's just taste it just to see. I can already kind of smell the sourness though. Yeah, so two, two polar the other direction. Now it's weak. Now I don't feel like it has any like real notes sticking out. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do next, go back to that little bit finer adjustment. And then uh, I think since that's kind of giving us the quantity we want, we'll mess around with other variables such as um, dose and temperature. So take one more sip of this and just get it in my brain. Yeah, a little light, a little weak. Yeah, okay. So. Great way to get caffeinated too if you're just looking for past your time especially if you're taking a sip of everyone by the end of it you'll be talking as fast as i do um just seen me when i dialed in and i was a barista um the coffee shop i worked at there were um about four single origin coffees we had to dial in every day within 30 minutes and so it would be one person dialing all those in and you'd have to taste every shot. So by the end of it, I was talking so fast, uh, customers could barely understand me. It's pretty funny. All right, so made a small adjustment, hopefully back in that range. So yeah, 19.1, so kind of back to where we were before. Take some of that out. And then if I know that this is the grind size I want, now I'm ready to change the time and the dose. So on my grinder, it's been set at 3.2 this whole time. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock it back. This one decreases by increments of um, tenths of a second, something like that. So I'm gonna knock it down to, let's just do three, three seconds. All right. Beautiful. Go ahead, rinse that. The coffee residue from the last one. Rinse the shot glass. Should close that. All right. And we are ready to pull another one. Just make sure it's all teared out. Perfect, okay, so that one dropped at six. Actually, I stopped that one a little late. My apologies there. But that actual one, this one actually finished uh, sooner, so I might not be quite back in that range. It stopped at 24 seconds. I'm filling up on espresso here. So let's just see how it turned out. That one's better, smoother. It still doesn't have a lot going on with the notes though. So it's it's just very like chocolate forward. And we're trying to pull out Pinot Blanc and molasses and raspberry, right? So I think since this is a single origin coffee and it's roasted a little bit lighter, what the next step would be is to turn up the temperature, right? So, get into my programming here. Click through a few options. Brew boiler temperature, we're turning that up. Let's just turn it up by a little bit. So 230 is now what it will be. I'm gonna take just a little second there to do that. Since it's just a little bit, it should be up to the temperature I want by the time I'm ready to pull my next shot. I was faster than this in the cafe, but no need to rush right now. It also, too, one of the fun things um, about dialing in espresso is every roaster 
does their coffee so differently that, um, let's do, we're doing another shot, that if you're using a bunch of different roasters and like changing up the brand, um, I feel like it grows your coffee knowledge because you're, you're getting used to like the idea and the concept of espresso rather than just like sticking within what you're used to for your coffee. It really expanded my knowledge when I moved from working with one roaster to over 40. Okay, so this is ready and up to temp. Okay, so getting a little reset here. Coffee locked in. Rinse that out really quick. All right. You do wanna be pretty quick when you put in your coffee. You don't wanna let it sit too long in the pour filter since that's heated. So doing my best to get that going there. Nice, so still around six or seven for the drop. Gosh, that rotary pump is so quiet. It's nice. All right, 34, 20 seconds. So see, temperature sometimes quickens the extraction too, so sometimes you might have to adjust the grind. Let's just see what happened there though. Yeah, that's better. So now I get more of the raspberry on like the dryness. The molasses is more in the body of this, I think, because it's very syrupy, which is not a bad thing for espresso. I think this is pretty good. You could keep tweaking and just seeing what would happen, but I would leave my grinder set up like this with this amount, like this temperature and everything. Um, I think it makes it pretty easy to drink, um, an approachable espresso. So, cheers. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, and I hope you're staying safe. Don't forget to wash your hands. Thanks.